Now, if you've built a gaming PC or you're messing around with it, having lots of fun with it, you know what I'm talking about. We've got a bunch of different RGB lighting in this PC, and we've got right here at least four different applications to control all of that RGB lighting. I've got Armory Crate, L Connect, IQ, and a Cooler Master piece of software to control this heat sink. So in comes Signal RGB to save all of us from this madness. Now, it is pretty robust in solving the overall problem here. It's not perfect by any stretch. So I highly recommend, it's free. If you haven't done so already, go download it right now, install it, check it out, because above all, what it does really well is allows you to just have a lot of fun with it. It's fun to just come through here and move stuff around on the canvas and try a bunch of different looks and just customize the heck out of it. But once you get to the Signal RGB website, you can download now, download the executable, go ahead and run the installation program and then launch the program when you're done. It's a pretty straightforward install. So when you first start it, it will do a scan of your computer and try to find all of the supported controllers and RGB elements that it can find. In my experience, it's very robust at doing that. There's, I can't really think of anything offhand that it's not ever been able to find. One of the settings in Signal RGB is you should be able to set it so that it will automatically close all of the conflicting software. IQ, L Connect, you know, Armory Crate, things like that. It should automatically try to shut those down. There is a setting that you can tell it to not do that if you choose to do it. You'll have to kind of play around with that and see what fits best for your situation. It will give you some informational alerts down here that it was able to close this or if it's not able to close it. The biggest one I've had problems with personally is the ASUS software, uh, like the lighting services.exe function. So a lot of times it can't close that down and I find myself having to go into task manager and kill that. It's like any software that's trying to do what this is doing and that's mess around with a lot of you know, different types of hardware and software, you're going to have to mess around with something at some point. That's my experience with it. But I recommend once you get it installed, go ahead and go through the tour that it takes you on and kind of understand where everything is at. But the first place you should check out once you get here is go to My Rig and then click on Devices. Then it's telling us we have some unconfigured components and that's what this means is we're gonna go ahead and uh, ignore this warning for now because we're gonna go configure it. But on the motherboard, go to the setup icon and you'll get the different channels or objects that you need to set up and it should be blinking the corresponding color. So this motherboard has three RGB headers. Now you've got channel one, two, and three. Two of them are five volt ARGB headers. The other is a 12 volt one. But what you'll need to do is you'll need to come in here and for channel one, uh, click the plus sign here and then you can select which component you want. Now it has a whole bunch of pre-built in components here or you can configure your own. You can do a search here and see if it has it. So we'll put Fantex D3120. And you can see that it lights up the first fan here. So we'll go ahead and add another one. Second one, Fantex D3120. Now we have all three fans lit. But just take your time and go through each channel and set up the number of LEDs. One of these is the 12 volt header. So there's really no number of LEDs that we need to set on it. It's just going to light them all up. But moving on, same with the Lee and Lee controller. We'll just go to the setup here and you'll need to set the different channels here. Uh, there's four ports on this controller, one, two, three, and four, and you'll just need to come through here and configure each of these. So as you can see on the PC, those Lee and Lee fans are red, so we know they're channel one. We're just gonna come here, Lee and Lee SL120, and we'll just go ahead and add three of those. You can see it adding those as you go. Uh, there is nothing on channel two, three, and four on this controller, so we're good to go here. Uh, here's the Commander Core XT setup. Again, we'll go into the setup button here and you get three pin lighting channel and four pin lighting channel. The blue color is the LL120 fan, so we'll go ahead and go here, we'll do a search LL120, and it shows that it's a Corsair LL fan, so we'll go ahead and add that, and we'll just add a second one, so now we have two of those. On the three pin lighting channel, we have nine of the LC100 triangles, and so we'll just go ahead and add an LC100 panel, which is nine LEDs, and I believe we'll need to add nine of those. All right, so now we've got all nine triangles added on here and the two fans. That's all that's connected on the Core XT. But moving over a lot of these devices, there is no setup. You know, there's nothing on the uh, keyboard. This is the Nexus. There's nothing to set up here. The mouse, nothing to set up on the Wraith Prism. I also do have some GoV sconce lights. They're downstairs, but uh, you're able to set those up and they work fine. I've also got the Nano Leaf lights over, over here. Uh, which you can integrate into this setup as well. There's a number of different, uh, uh, different components you can do. So once the setup is done, then you can come back through each device and you get a number of different settings here. 
Obviously you get the overall device brightness that you can change up and down uh, on each individual component. Uh, the shutdown color is going to be what it does if signal RGB is not running. Now the lighting mode here, you can change it to canvas or forest. Canvas is the main method on how RGB lighting effects work. We'll talk about that in just a second. But if you do a forced mode, you can just directly control this particular element, not on the canvas. And so you can change the, the color of it. You know, we got a yellow, green, blue, purple. Uh, you can change the saturation and the luminance of it. Okay, and that's for the memory modules. Again, most of these things, you're gonna control them in a canvas mode. Now, same with the motherboard. You can come down here and you can change the configurations of each of the ports. You get the same lighting modes force color, shutdown color, overall device brightness. It's probably also a good time to mention too that you can come through here and paint individual LEDs and it's in this little paintbrush icon here. And basically you just wanna select a color, come here and then come back and you can hit the paintbrush icon or you can just select the individual uh, LEDs here. Now let's go down here to layouts. This is what the canvas is. So think of the canvas as exactly that, like an art canvas and you're just putting a sequence over the top of it. In this case, it's just you know these colors going back and forth. And then all of your devices are overlaid on that canvas somewhere. And so what it does is just depending on how they're laid out, that's the color that you get. Whatever is on this canvas, wherever your device is, that's the color that kind of shines through and then you can make that look pretty cool on your PC. Now you can move all of your devices around in here and you just have to kind of come in here and play around with it. And then over on the right side panel, you can enable, disable certain devices, uh, things like that. You can create different layouts here, you know, if, if you want to move objects around. But basically, you can kind of just grab everything from behind here or come over here and select what you want. This takes a little bit of fiddling around with it to kind of get everything the way that you want. You know, it's not perfect, but you can kind of customize this and do whatever you want with it. Get it configured the way that you want, then you can save the layout name, whatever you want, and then you can quickly kind of readdress these as you need to. But then over here, you know, on each individual component, you get some more nuanced you know, movement uh, icons. You can kind of adjust it through a slider, which will move it up and down in here. Uh, you can change the size of it. There's lots of different things you can do. You can change the rotation of it, but you can move those wherever on that canvas because as you'll see here in just a minute, the lighting effects that you can apply, there are tons of them that you can put on that canvas and you can get really different looks based on how those objects are laid out on the canvas. Now, let's go back to home. This is where you're going to start applying those effects. And from home, you can see, you'll get a couple of different sections here. You'll get a free section. These are the ones that'll be available to you, obviously, for the free. But to apply an effect, you just wanna find which one you think you wanna mess around with. Uh, you can download it if it's not already downloaded and then click the checkbox and then it will go ahead and apply the effect. And you'll see in the upper left hand corner, it shows you what effect you have. Now, if you double click it in the upper left hand corner, you can see it more clearly and then you get a bunch of different settings and most of them will have individual settings here. You know, color cycle random, you can change the speed of the, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do. Not everything maybe is adjustable, but, uh, you, know, you can change the amount of elements on the screen, so on and so forth. A lot of these have some pretty crazy amounts of customizability, which can make it fun, which is the whole point of this. You can get in here and you can kind of mess around with it and just have a good time trying a whole bunch of different sequences. On this particular element, for example, if you set this up in a couple of different ways that you really like, you can just press and hold, like that saves it to preset A. You can then go ahead and change it, you know, whatever you want. We'll just put this lower and you could save that to preset B. And then we can just click A and go back and go back to B. But we'll come back to home. You can change it to a whole bunch of different things. But once you have a lighting effect that you really like, come back to layout. You can move your components around on that canvas to see what looks the best for you. There are some game integrations, which means like if you're playing Fortnite, for example, when certain events happen on the screen, it will do certain lighting effects. I believe most of those, if not all of those, are behind the pro uh, level, which means you need to pay for this. Once you pay for it, and it's fairly cheap, I think it's about five bucks a month if you do it on a monthly basis, you get a little bit of a break if you pay it per year. You unlock all of the pro features there, of course, which gives you quite a bit more uh, lighting effects in general. Uh, you also unlock the cooling functions. 
uh, which basically just gives you some fan control. Now, I haven't messed with this a whole lot, and when I've set it up recently, the only fans that it's detecting are the Core XT fans. So I really am not gaining control over like the Lee and Lee fans or the stuff that's connected directly to the motherboard because I've got kind of a mishmash of stuff here. But if you had everything on that Commander Core, of course it would work, but it seems to me like the fans on the motherboard should be here at least. It does encourage you to scan the fans so that it can configure the start and stall speeds. Once you do that, you can select the fan, select what sensor you want, and then you can go through and create custom fan curves and things like that. I do have a temperature probe connected to the Core XT and it does see that probe. And so that's a good sign. Uh, PC monitoring is exactly that. Uh, this is only unlocked on the Pro version as well. You can kind of configure what it is you want to see here. Uh, you just drop it down. You can see what elements you want to see. Of course, down along the bottom, you get the graphs that you can go through and kind of look at all of these and check it out. But that's really all there is to that. Uh, also with the Pro version, you get macros unlocked. Uh, this is pretty simple, but I kind of like the layout of this personally. Uh, basically, you're selecting what input you want, and you get all of these inputs over here on the left. You know, effect applied, key pressed, layout applied, mouse click. There's a whole bunch of different ones. And then what do you want to happen when that occurs, right? It's a macro. I mean, we've all seen that. But there's a whole bunch of different things you can do, you know, open different applications, customize things, effects, and things like that. Now, network down here at the bottom, this is where you can kind of start to expand this into like the GoV lights that uh, I showed you earlier, NanoLeaf lights, Philips Hue, there's a bunch of uh, other ones here. I've done both the NanoLeaf lights and the GoV lights. Uh, both were fairly easy to pair up and get working, and they work just fine. Overall, I've always had a positive experience with Signal RGB. It's an incredible piece of software for what we're asking it to do, uh, which is to communicate with all these different pieces of hardware, uh, the software integrations, and all the different lights, and get it all kind of working together. The fact that it works as well as it does is a really cool thing. And again, it's fairly robust. Most of the time, I don't have that much trouble with it. I inevitably always kind of have to go sh help it shut something down or do something like that, kind of mess around with it a little bit. But very little overall. It doesn't really detract from the experience all that much. And so from that perspective, it really just nails it. Um, you know, it's fun. And that's most important to me when I'm messing around with lights. So would I recommend paying the subscription cost uh, per month to unlock some of the pro features, the cooling, the monitoring, and the macros. So for me personally, probably not. I don't particularly like the layout of the cooling or the monitoring functions here. The cooling functions on this particular PC really aren't that usable. I can't even control all the fans anyways. The macros would be really useful if you were using this on a daily basis and depending on it a little bit more than I am. But with that said, if you find those usable or you want some of the game integrations, that's the other thing that would be really helpful uh, on the Pro version. If you want those game integrations and some of the advanced uh, RGB lighting effects, yeah, I would say for one month, just check it out. For five bucks, you can try it out for a month and see if it's something you want to do. So, but overall, in the grand scheme of RGB lighting, uh, Signal RGB nails it on many, many different levels. Uh, misses on a couple for me, but uh, that's really minor stuff. I don't really care. It's one of the few pieces of software other than IQ that I keep on the PC and will use from time to time. I don't have any affiliation with Signal RGB. You know, don't benefit from all you purchasing it or not purchasing it or whatever. Uh, really just wanted to bring your attention to it, give you my personal thoughts and opinions on it. And anyways, it's a definitely a cool tool. Go check it out.